Hey, this is Kathleen from Always Acting Up Podcast and Blog. If we haven't met yet, I am an actress, former dancer, and host. I now create a podcast and a blog where my podcast focuses on success stories of how to get into the entertainment industry. I do have some of my own personal stories in there, tips and tricks and things I've learned along the way, as well as industry conversations with professionals who have already done it. Now, my blog, the blog, I know it's 2022, but the blog focuses on elements to help you look, feel, and perform better in front of the camera and in life. Now, the reason I mentioned that I know it's 2022 is because I understand people don't read blogs anymore. I get it. I know we got things to do, places to go, people to see, whatnot. However, I still enjoy writing blogs and therefore I have one. So what I did with the blogs is I know that it is a little time consuming to read. So I'm actually starting a roadmap series on my blogs of how to start a career in the entertainment industry. And because I know people got things to do, instead of reading the blogs, I'm actually going to be making a video for each of those 10 steps. So it'll pretty much summarize what the blogs are saying. However, I would still recommend going to the blogs to actually read them. But in case you don't want to do that, I'm going to make a little video for you and that's why we're here. So this is going to be step one of how to start your career in the entertainment industry. Now, step one I said was to research. Let me go ahead and open up that blog, assuming I can figure out how to do this. One second. Okay, so here we are. This is my blog, which is castlinrose.com slash blog. There are several different blogs in there that you can read with information on how to find in auditions near you, best fitness, things along those sort of themes, success, auditions, things you should wear to set, wardrobe items you should bring to set. You're going to find it all there. So this blog, we're going to talk all about step one, which I said was the research phase. So first thing I think that you need to research is kind of to decide where you would like to be as an actor. And what I mean by that is I sort of mean what medium you would like to focus on. And by that, I mean, we have commercials, you have theater, you have voiceover, you have independent films, TV, network TV, film, movies. There's a whole bunch of different avenues for actors. Some actors even like to stay in class and just do improv, but kind of decide what you want to do. And the reason that's important is because Taking classes for commercials versus taking a scene study class are two completely different things. You're going to have to know different audition techniques and just sort of different styles. So I found that it was important to decide where you would like to go. If you don't know, I would say try them all. Do everything. You 100% can do everything, but I do not recommend doing it all at once. It's going to take a little bit of time. Moving on. See? quick and easy. So the next thing I said was, let's talk about the cost. Y'all, I'm going to be honest. Being an actor is not cheap. It is an investment and it's going to cost a lot of money. Honestly, I had no idea how much money it was actually going to cost. But think of yourself like a business and every business has startup costs and startup fees. So most of the time with those businesses, you're not going to make your money back right away. So even if you don't make your money like back back, think of it as an investment in yourself. You now learn a new skill. Most likely you're better at speaking. You're better at being in front of the camera. And these are all things that can go into all avenues of your life, whether acting is something you want to continue to do, or if you want to go into other fields later on in life. Now, with that being said, What are some of the costs that an actor will have to pay for on a semi-regular basis? Well, I think it's safe to say headshots. Headshots used to be like around, used to, y'all, used to, no longer, not anymore. You could find people, but just depending on which, uh, the quality and sort of where you are in your career, they can be quite, quite pricey. Um, If you didn't know, I actually have a background in photography as well, and I used to think God, these are so expensive. But now behind the camera, even something like 250 as a photographer, I'm like, "Mm, it's not enough, not enough because it's a lot of work for the photographers to 
find the work, take the pictures, export, and then pretend, potentially do all of the additional edits. So it is fair. It is a business for them too. Okay, back to what I was saying. Headshots. Uh, headshots are an expense you're going to have to invest in for yourself. These are essentially your calling card. You pretty much cannot get work if people don't know what you look like. You know, people are, want to fill a role. And if they're like, oh, this person is orange with purple polka dots, like, how are we going to know that? We need to see what you look like. Obviously, the better the quality, the better it is. But, you know, depending on where you are in your career, all of these things, you know, it'll vary quality level. Note, I think there's also a step later down in the line of the 10 steps on how to be an actor where we talk specifically about headshots later on. So go ahead and subscribe now so you don't miss that episode. And I'll go ahead and once I get there, I'll link it in the comment section below. Moving on, you're also gonna have to pay for classes. <laughs> I think that's fairly safe to say. If you, uh, you know, don't know exactly what you're doing yet, I would highly suggest taking classes. And as I mentioned with like commercials versus scene study and improv, they're all different. While I do think that you should be well, I don't really think it's something where like you take a class and you're done and then you move on and take another class and you're done. I think you need to consistently be in classes. You know, you're bettering yourself, so it's all good. Casting websites are something you're also going to have to invest your time in. If you have not gone to my blog, I would highly suggest going over and reading the section titled Red Flags in Hollywood. Things you should be on the lookout for, things you should pay for, things you should not know, things you should not pay for, and things you need to be aware of. Also wardrobe. I'm not saying you need to have a wardrobe for everything, but when you head on to set sometimes on the smaller smaller budgets, they ask you to bring certain wardrobes to set. So I would recommend going to uh, the blog and reading what those items are as well. I'll tell you guys eventually at some point. And of course, beauty maintenance. Like this one sounds really silly, but you have to look like your headshots, y'all. If you are changing your bangs and hair like me all the time, and then you show up and you don't look like your pictures or you don't look like that person anymore, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle. All right. Moving on to the next subject uh, portion, subject portion, the next thing you need to research. Okay, so this one is location. Gone are the days and the ideas where you could only be an actor if you live in LA, Hollywood, Chicago, New York, like those big, big markets. Hallelujah, because I don't live there anymore. And I would like to say that I absolutely have an acting career. Well, it's not as big as I want right now, I can still act doing local commercials, independent films. There's a ton of work. So this is a really important thing to pay attention to. So think about that. Where do you live? If you think that you live in the middle of nowhere and there's going to be no work for you, I guarantee you're wrong. If you're watching a commercial and you're like, oh, that's a local dealership. Guess what? They need actors. They need you. This is where you come in. Or, you know, let's say you don't want to do commercials or whatever. You can make your own projects. Thank you to TikTok, social media, YouTube, where we're here right now. You can act in your own projects. Think of, did y'all know uh, Issa Rae, I'm sure you guys all knew this, actually started on YouTube with her show way back in the day, her web series called Awkward Black Girl. And her show on HBO Max right now, Insecure, is sort of based on that web series. So it can be done. Create your own stuff. You can act anywhere. Okay, next topic. Okay, I feel like this one is really important. Important. Commitment. I think I mentioned at the beginning that having a career is a marathon and not a sprint. It's going to take time. But let's say you don't have the most time you're going to school or maybe you have a family to take care of. You may not have as much time as somebody who is um, supported financially by their parents or, you know, just out of school or retired or this is the only thing they're going to do. So I think it's important to decide where your commitment lies and what you're capable of, because it is a lot of work to find the audition, submit for the audition, audition, get the job. You have to be able to decide like, if I book this job, can I just peace out at work? 
or uh, am I going to get fired? Like there's a lot to think about. So really take a moment to think about your commitment level and what you're able to actually commit because it is a bit of time. So let's go ahead and move on to the next subject. This is actually going to be on part two of the blog because I didn't want to write that much. And I felt like we were getting, (laughs) I felt like we were getting a little far in. So I split it up into two sections. So this is research. Let's move on. Okay, here we are. So this is research, how to start an acting career part dose. It looks like this. Here we are. And okay. I decided it was important for you to really figure out what you like. Yes, you like acting. We get it. We know. But what do you like? Do you like comedy? Do you like drama? Do you like just doing improv? These are all really, really, really important because I also feel like you have to decide where you want to focus your energy and effort. If you really, really like comedy, but you're mainly focusing on drama, because you want to be well-rounded and that's fantastic. You may not have as much of a commitment as if maybe you were focusing specifically just on comedy. You know what I'm saying? I also think this is really important and I'm just going to give like Tiffany Haddish as an example. Tiffany Haddish, we know her as a comedian. So I would imagine that someone like Tiffany Haddish has a resume that is filled with comedy classes and improv classes and maybe when she was first starting her career, her or her headshots were funny and comedic with big smiles as opposed to dramatic and more serious. And so deciding what you like to sort of uh, cater your resume and headshots will put you straight on a path as opposed to kind of want to do it all. I think you can do it all. All I'm saying is like it gives you a little bit more of a roadmap and guide and guidelines. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Okay. And another important element in your research phase of how to start an acting career, I think that it is important to kind of take a moment to decide and research where you fit in. And I want to say, I'm making this very, very clear. There is room for every body, every type, every gender, color, shape, size, style, whatever you want to call it, there's room and place for everybody. So don't just think like, oh, you know, they don't have me on TV. It's not happening. It's not possible. That's not true. And one of the places I feel where you can really uh, take a moment to decide like, "Hmm, where do I fit in? Like, what's my type? What's my brand? Go watch some commercials. I think commercials are the place where they have like, oh yeah, check. Oh, she looks like that. Check. And I'm going to go ahead and give the males as an example here because it's just so obvious. Sorry, I don't mean to offend offend anybody. But how many commercials have you seen a Caucasian male, a little bit softer body type, maybe some scruff, unkept hair? He's everywhere. If you maybe look like that, then maybe that's your type. You are the next door neighbor. You're the, uh, the best friend. You're like maybe the quirky character. Whereas someone like me, sometimes I come off as a little bit more put together, a little bit more conservative, a little bit more on the Karen side sometimes. Maybe that's not what my personality is, but that's the type I I tend to play. I play a lot of significant others, the nurturers, uh, wives, girlfriends, whatever the case is. And I also play, um, what do I play? Hang on, I wrote that in here. That was the word. The regular at the country club. Those are kind of like my type. So I'm thinking about, you know, you kind of just want to think of like, well, what kind of character am I? I don't say, I'm not saying like go dress as a cowboy. I'm just saying like have an idea of what, where you could fit in. I hope this makes sense. And I hope I'm not discouraging anybody, but just take a moment and kind of like look at the types and categories and and where you think you fit in. But, But for reals, for reals, there's a place for everybody. So like, don't even think it's not for you. All right, this was step one of how to start your acting career of our roadmap series. So if you guys like this, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the other nine episodes of our roadmap series. And if you have any questions or you're thinking like, I want to start an acting career, I don't know how um, I read your roadmap series and it's not answering the questions that I have, go ahead and leave it in the comment section because I will get back to those 
whether it be on a podcast or blog. In the meantime, my podcast, I will be starting up again with season number four. It's going to be dope. I'm so excited. So if you're a podcast listener, make sure to go to all of um, your favorite podcasting platforms and make sure to subscribe so you can stay up to date with my podcast. All right. I hope this helped you out a little bit. You don't have to read. I made a video for you. I'll see you guys next time. That was some great information. If you like what you heard, make sure to go back and check out the full episode to hear more. And of course, we here at Always Acting Up Podcast cover plenty of other topics, such as getting a green card and working in the U.S., starting up a YouTube channel, making a feature film, and we even tell you how to be an actor from step one all the way to step 10. Let me know what you think and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Thanks for listening.